Well, howdy doody there. It's Sunday, April 7th. Me and Marie have been out running around. It's her day off today. As you see, I'm hopping around over here. The guys are working on her, Maria's house. Got a couple brothers working on it, some friends. There's, uh, I think today on the crew, there's five. They've done that block wall behind there. It's got stanchions going up to receive the tapered roof coming off the main house. They're mixing concrete. Actually, they're right there. They're mixing uh, sand and cement for the skim coat. And I'm gonna give you a preview of their skin coating because I showed you what the block is like when they rough in the block. I mean, there's rebar running through everywhere. All you guys that do block work like myself would really appreciate watching this process. It's something like I would do in the 60s before OSHA and all the other jackals came around. But see how that rough block is back in the bathroom area? Well, they put a skim coat on it. First, they slap it on, rough it, about, uh, oh, a half inch thick. Kind of half smooth it down, but they leave it very rough. That dries. It gets close to dry. And then they put another half inch coating over the top of that and smooth it off. Now this isn't really dry yet. It's semi dry. Maria. And I'll tell you what, well, we bought some things for him over here, brought him some banana bread and some muffins filled with chocolate for morning muffins with their coffee. I think I'll have one. Mm -hmm. If you know me, I'm not going to pass one of these up. And the butter we use, it's real butter. That window right there, well, here's a big window out looking out of uh, her master bedroom. Yeah, very good. Oh boy, look at that thing, it's full of chocolate. One of the bakeries make it, and we stopped on the way here, and they had loads of banana bread and things. And thought we bring them a snack because today is payday. We brought their pay for them and they're going to get paid later on tonight. And that open window right there is getting a rotated large screen TV in it and a small window pane below it. So it'll spin around so outdoors it can be used as a uh, for the action patio out there, it'll spin, watch TV from in the bedroom, spin it around and use it for karaoke in the evenings or whenever somebody wants. It'll be sealed off, it'll have bumper seals on it. But I wanted to put it on a rotator disc dropped from the, the uh, window box from the top. It'll be a dual use item. Because this afternoon we're going to her brother's. We ended up there, didn't know we were going there. And she said, come on, let's go to my brother's. And uh, he's right on the water, down on a really nice sand beach. And we went down there and lo and behold, to go swimming and all that, we got there at dark. And we polished off, I think, uh, between, everybody comes around, it's a wonderful thing. 12 liters, there's the rough rough block there is the skim coat anyway we did 12 liters of uh, <laughs> red horse and sang karaoke and if you look real close you'll see the block then a skim coat and then a final skim coat over the top of that it is super adhered you can't I can't explain the whole thing to you unless you watch it It looks primitive. Everything's hand mixed and hand done, no machines here. Hand spread. 
I've done it the same way many times in the old days before all the rules came around. And there's the first coat that goes over the block. It's just slapped on as normal and then knocked down. Not flattened, just knocked down with your trowel. Just a little bit knocked down so it's not too lumpy. And then it comes out like that. So we're over here checking out because we're probably going to need some more supplies. You can see that orange cable wire coming down. That's a flexible conduit. It's coming down there for a utility plug because that'll be the corner. There will be a, a large karaoke corner there. And that TV will be in this window box. Rotating around, probably a 60 inch, I think will fit in that box. And it won't go all the way to the bottom because it's about nine inches below it, maybe a foot, I haven't measured it yet. You're gonna get one of those uh, slide windows there with a screen in it. So it'll slide back and forth and then it'll hold some things. But it'll be up above, the TV will be up above it. And there's where they're doing their filter sand. They put the sand, of course, and they screen it to get it clean for doing final coatings. There's one of her brothers working back there. When we get more, and boy, do we have fun! They're going to be where they took me, where he lives, and his wife. They live down on a place, and it's a street going right down to the beach, a very popular local beach. And I'm not going to tell you where it's at, because I'm about the only foreigner down there. And there's shops, and there's all kinds of things down there, and it's Philippine heaven. And I went down there tonight when we got done here. Everybody got paid. We had some snacks. We need more cement tomorrow. Then we went down by the beach. Yeah. More cement tomorrow. Hung out. Yes, yes. Yeah. One of the neighbors popped out, popped That's his karaoke machine out. Right now. And we done karaoke. And her brother. Her brothers are great singers, and uh, they help back me up. They get behind me, and when I'm singing a song, I lose the rhythm or the beat, and I can hear them behind me doing doing the song, and I can pick up on it again. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah. You mix your coat material there. You see any wheelbarrows? Nope. Everything's done by hand. Mixers? Nope. Now when you reach over and pick up these cinder blocks that are sitting on the side there that this is built out of, totally different cinder blocks those there. You grab that thing and pick it up and if you haven't got it balanced just right in your hand, it'll just crumble. Your fingers will just punch right through it. Nothing like the blocks in the I USA. I love doing that. You want to put a platform on them or a, it, use them to put a counter or a piece of board on and use it to set something on? Forget it. Maybe It'll on crumble. the last, last little bit maybe today. It's so a filler there, block. Filler it's made to be filled, there made works. to be coated. It looks so good. It's kind of like when you put a frame on a foundation. You put a frame up Many and pour it. Go full. Well, this one is a frame poured down the middle with all the rebar crisscrossing along every grout line for now. and down the middle. Plenty of sand for now. And then it's Probably coated on both sides with double coats. Most of next week. It's awesome. They're doing yeah, a great job. About half to do what they do. The only so thing I regret be good for, and that, good that for I'm that. not in the middle of this. 
finish mixing and spreading concrete and stacking block i hate watching this so i don't hang around long <laughs> so maybe hey maria go out to eat all the time maybe friday we have to get more sand and then monday tomorrow more concrete or more cement and that'll last them through the week and then tomorrow we we're going to spend the night actually the on a pad yes, in the master yes, bedroom tomorrow. let the kids have the main house they're in the house sleeping in there so they can goof around in there tonight because we'll be home kind of late probably we did get home kind of late actually and there's no windows on the new place there's none of that we have to actually there's a temporary concrete floor left over from the old building where they started before so we'll sweep that off and put a, a platform down and a nine inch foam pads spend the night we've done it before and i'm not used to spending camping out in the philippines i figured well this is going to be mosquitoes and bugs no nothing you're going to sit sit out here with me yeah? yeah, but I want to get the other skin. It's just awesome. We sit and just relax. Now, after the guys left, I did go around and take a, a large old door that was in the back room area and caught my back of my hand on a, a nail that was sticking out of a board, a really sharp nail. I just bumped into it real light. You can bump the back of your hand on a nail anytime you want. And it'll be just like a scratch. My whole life, I have never hit directly over a vein. It was a stuck pig. As soon as it hit that sharp needle thing, I was hanging on to another thing, and I looked, I felt it go bump into it, and it just started spurting out all over the place. Flooded my one hand, flooded my other hand, trying to sweep it off and stop it from gushering, like a stuck pig all right make your comments as you want but that's what happened and I'm around by the the kids bathroom in the back room area and there's a bunch of stuff all over the floor because it's construction and these guys are all gone Maria's doing some laundry things over there and she doesn't hear me over there so she starts coming around the corner and I'm going uh oh last thing you want to do is have a woman see you gushing blood i mean up to my high part of my wrist on both hands was just solid red and it's just running off my fingers look like it's raining off my fingers and i'm used to that it happens to all if you're a construction guy you know and don't ever show it to anybody else keep it to yourself clean it off Get the bleeding stopping. Luckily, I coagulate real quick, but I've never popped a vein actually. This one I did, and uh, I didn't have time to clean it off. Here she comes around the corner, so I raised my right hand up because she asked what happened. I go here, look, my right hand is just bright red, covered in blood, dripping, and she goes, "Oh my God!" You know exactly what you figured they're gonna do and freaking out, and I go, "Oh no, 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 no." She goes, your hand, look at your hand. I said, oh no, that's not the hand. And I pulled my left hand around the corner and said, this is the hand that's her. And it's just blood, dripping blood everywhere. <laughs> and I'm kind of looking at it going, oh Jesus, um, here she goes. And of course, yes, she's a mother. Oh my gosh, oh my God, oh, look at that. I've never seen anything like that. Da, 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 da. You know, I guess she, I thought she figured, because there's so much blood that I cut a finger off. That's what it kind of looked like. Now, this is her before that. <laughs> She's so awesome. And she wanted to do this, and I said, no, 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 no. Let's, oh. Speaking of the stuff pig. And I said, no, no, no. And I had my finger over it to uh, keep it, and you, then you lift your finger off, and it slows down. And 
pretty soon I got it over. I didn't want to bleed and I didn't want to touch the walls. I should have, after I thought of this, I went, why didn't you go and put handprints all over the walls? It would have looked awesome. The guys would have came in the morning and went, oh man. <laughs> But anyway, I went over by the wash basin and uh, a bucket wash and just started rinsing it off and washing my hands. And it took a while to get all that blood off everywhere. And uh, I got it all rinsed off and it started slowing down and stopped. But the whole hand, back of the hand swelled up from a poke. It was like a pig poke. <laughs> oh, there he is. I mean, I'm so, I am so excited about this. I'm having such a good time. Yeah, and uh, so I got it to stop bleeding, and like I said, it just swelled up and swelled. And she's getting all excited about the swelling. I said, "Ah, oh, that's just what happens. My hands have been smashed so many times in my toes and frostbite and all that other stuff. Uh, this is nothing." And I, when I had things to do, I was doing some things. So I wanted to get some things done while the guys weren't there. Because they won't let me work. No, sir. No, sir. Of course, and I'm very respectful to all workers. I will stay out of their way because my whole life, nothing that bothered me the most when people came around my job site. Want to talk. Want to do this. Want to give you lunch. Want to hang out. No, sir. We're working. And you try to be nice to them, but they don't understand. Leave us okay. alone. Get out of the way. If you have to ask somebody working on your house, oh, am I in your way? Guess what? You are. Well, anyway, we got done with that during the day. And there's another thing down the road being built. There's the pool hall on our corner. All the guys shooting pool. And we're heading over to our brother's house. Oh, no, wait a minute. Right now, we're heading over to uh, the chicken place to get some roasted chicken to bring back for everybody. Yeah, let's go get him some lunch before they quit. We'll do payday while we, uh, she does, she's in charge of all the payday and stuff. So I'm on the back of her scooter, riding with her. They got some really good uh, rotisserie chickens right down the street from her place. This is the road coming out of her place. So let's run down there and get him some of that. And the roasted pork fat with meat on it. Uh -huh. You'll see the sign. You'll see what a roasted chicken costs whole. They chop it up for you. And you just open the bag and let everybody go. And I love it. I eat it all the time. And it's so nice riding down this road. She's not near the beach, she's about five minutes ride to the beach. But she is my favorite little taxi driver. So I thought I'd throw the old uh, phone on here. I had, I had a selfie stick on it. There's a little rough road going out just before it gets to the crossroad. A lot of rock. And it comes right up here. There's a sorry, sorry store right at the top of this road where it meets a crossroad that goes down to the highway. There comes somebody on a trike down there. Right ahead, that's a sorry, sorry store. You can go in there and get some ice cream and beers and grocery, uh, simple groceries, coffees, all that stuff. This is the main highway heading back into town. Sibulon. It's a pretty busy little highway here. It isn't right now because it's Sunday. But you'll see how close she is to this chicken place. Right there. Here it comes.
Nino's Ready. I think it's called Nino's. Okay. No? How about Moen's? <laughs> Moans. Moans? Moans. I don't know, they tell me how to pronounce these things, and it doesn't last in my brain for five minutes. And I've been to this place probably five times getting chickens. I don't know her neighborhood real well yet. She's right up, right up straight up over those trees. That's where she lives back up in there. And you come down this little walkway, and this is where the rotisserie chickens. They only got a few more starting. They just got cleaned out. And that's the pork sticks. Best stuff in the world. I had to get some of those, too. For the guys, but I ended up eating half of them, so I had to get some more. Lempe. Lempo. Lempo? 230. Oh. <laughs> that 230 is your whole chickens. You Each one of those. Fun, 230 yeah. pesos. And they are good. That's four dollars and seven cents today's trade. Four bucks. And he chops it all up. Now they don't chop it like you do and go to the joints. They chop it. <laughs> you just start grabbing chunks out of the bag. Really simple. So we got two of the chickens and two of the limpo. And you'll see him do the limpo next. So for about ten dollars, got a whole chicken, two whole chickens, and limpo. Then later on, we do go to that karaoke beach party. We didn't have time to go for a swim. Everybody was too busy doing karaoke. And I hung around to do it because I really, usually he has about 20 of those roasted chickens on there at a time. On Sunday afternoon, I think he's slowing it down. They might be closing soon. I don't know. There's a limpos. It's a very fat, fatty pork meat. I believe it's pork belly, but I'm not, I don't know for sure. I've been told. Like I said, I forget things a lot. Not old age. I just always been that way. You want me to re remember somebody's name when you introduce me to him? Ain't gonna happen. Your brother like this, Lippo? Yeah. Look at that. Mm. How do you pronounce it? That stuff has a spicy crust on it you wouldn't believe. It is the best. You have to get that. If you ever see Limpo somewhere, grab it. Now they're going to be lazy after it work. Chicken and Limpo. Every time I see it now, I can't, I can't leave it. If somebody's got it on a rotisserie, a barbecue, I say, what's the other? Limpo. Oh, cool. Give me some. Because uh, I have a habit of being hungry all day. Actually, when I went, met Maria, I weighed about eight pounds less than I do now. She's a foodie. Her daughter's a foodie. By the time I get done, oh, how much are we going to spend here? She's going to get some thousands out here. Oh, no. Oh, she's got my wad of cash. If you guys have got girlfriends and married, you know what uh, 
what hands are going to be on your cash. It ain't going to be you. 720. But I'll tell you what, in the U.S., that was my thing. Anybody around me for lunch, dinner, party, whatever. If I was eating or drinking, they were included. In my world, in the business world, pretty much I wrote off all that stuff. So everybody got whatever they wanted at any time. Especially the people that worked for me. They never had to buy lunch. I was always taking them out. Best thing in the world you can do for people, if you want to appreciate them, it's an old known thing. To show people's appreciation, you do it over food. Now there's another shot of where she lives back up in there. Her scooter sitting out there. Another guy pulling up there to get a chicken. Now he's only got about four chickens left ready to go. And he's gonna have to tell people to wait. There's a tire shop for scooters right next door. No? You won't see too many tire shops for automobiles. There's only a few, but lots of motorcycles. Oh, that's right. For scooters. So we're going to go out here. My uh, taxi driver there is going to put the chicken and limpo under her seat. And we're going to scooty boot back up to where the workers are. There she's crossing over, it doesn't take long, right over to the road we turn on to her house. There she is in the rear view mirror. And me. And we got a wedding day pretty, there is so much paperwork to do. We're getting a deal set up right now where we have to actually say when our wedding date is. We're starting to get down to reserving a venue and all that. May 2nd, 2024. That's almost guaranteed right now. Hello! We've got a place right near here. I mean, it's within walking distance. <laughs> I say almost. No. It's right down from that chicken place over the bridge. And it's got an Olympic-sized pool. So how much was it? Cabanions. Uh, it's got every seating for over 100 people. A big tower next to the pool where we'll be on top of that way up there getting married over the top of everybody. That's cheap chicken. It's all lit with colorful lights. Oh, you're going to see this one after May 2nd. I'll get somebody to video it because being married, I don't think I'm going to do any videoing. I'm going to let somebody else do it. Limpo and two chickens. We'll be well dressed. Not my idea. <laughs> Nine, nine what? 940. But they have a certain style they wear here when they get married in the Philippines, and I'll be in it. We'll be happy campers because after that, then we're going to take off and go on a honeymoon to probably we were thinking of Taiwan, but me and other have a little problems like to do over something there right now. Payday. Maybe falling down. Today's Sunday. So maybe. Uh, not Taiwan, but Thailand. We were here last I want to go to a foodie place. I didn't yeah. want to go by myself, so I've been waiting. And once I take her with years me old last Sunday, out year. of the country, she just got her pass, her new passport for the Philippines. And they're not allowed to go to the United States, this and that, or anywhere else, but like Vietnam, Thailand, Taiwan, uh, a couple other places. but. They cannot take off and go like to the United States. They got to go through hell and high water to get a permit to go. It is a lot of paperwork, a lot of things to do. You have to go to Manila and get permits and interviews. And, and so right anyway, on the corner of we're going to go to Thailand. And table. once we, I take her out of the country with me, I and come back. Play pool. I'm visa free. Yikes. I don't have to have that 30-day visa anymore which they shorten, you could get it for six months, now you got to get it every two months again. They're planning on taking it back to six months, but 
That was nice. I got that once where you didn't have to mess with it for six it's months. Like a high class but they run you through interviews and all that, just like when you get your passport, you're all checked out and see you're being a criminal or a bad guy or not paying your bills or you don't have that on record and they won't give you one. So once I come back, all right, here we go at the pool hall again, turning up her little road. Now you turn up this road and she's just right up there. kind of a dead end and there's a big property back behind there and I'm going to be talking to her I already have a little bit let me off now I'm in the construction <laughs> business I miss it a lot I can't be a builder here but she can when we get this project that's why I'm kind of documenting in a little bit because we got the we got a perfect crew put together these guys live on site they'll put hammocks up and stay here for a week at a time So I'm uh, thinking about getting that's it's I forget how many hectares it is, but it's equivalent to about three acres I think in the U.S. Then we can build some simple homes back in there. She can be the contractor, and I can be the guy behind the scenes. She's already getting used to. She orders all this block, cement, rebarb, uh, everything that's needed for this project, she does it. And she's doing pretty good and it hasn't stressed her out yet. Well, it is down because we're picking out windows and stuff and it's they're hard to find here. You have to look around. Because we're doing some different stuff than normal people. But it's kind of a neat thing and we're not going to build huge custom homes, just small three bedroom two baths there's her daughter she's getting ready to take off somewhere so she wanted to sit down and have a little snack and chicken Maria's got it under her seat got paperwork there's a limpo Mmm, and rice. And banana bread, and some snacks. And then all that chopped up chicken, and, and you can't keep her daughter out of that good stuff. I'll tell you what, uh, when I go places with her mother, and there's a place